everybody, and welcome to this next episode, installment, episode, uh, episode of the I Hate Mad Wall Poetry Podcast, where people come to hear things and then feel good when they leave, hopefully. On this episode, it this is kind of a thrown up in the air kind of thing. I have a few things I want to talk about. I don't know which ones I'm going to get to. So um, I'm going to kind of play it by ear here. But since the last episode went up on, what day was that? Saturday, I believe. I did get an email. And this time I have it exactly where it was. And I'm going to read it to you guys. Because, believe it or not, I made a mistake in the last episode. I'm Hitchcocking you guys right now. What is it? Is the suspense building? Okay, let's take a look at this. I got an email from somebody, somebody who sent in an email, and here it goes. It says, my name is not Nancy, it's Susan. So, for those of you who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, in the last episode, I was talking about Nancy. And how Nancy said I didn't read enough poetry on this podcast. And how Nancy got mad that I said something bad about the Commonplace podcast. Well, the reason why I couldn't find Nancy's fucking emails was because I was searching for Nancy. Because that was the conversation I thought I was having. Turns out Nancy's name is Susan. So Susan, I apologize. That was very stupid of me to like misname you and have this whole conversation with you and have you not even be who I said you were. But I'm going to fucking say the reason why, the reason why I called you Nancy and it's my fault again for not doing my due diligence here. But I, I sometimes forget stuff and sometimes I make up my own shit. And I'm like, why the fuck did I think this person's name was Nancy? I'm going to tell you. Nancy, the first three letters in your email address are Nan. N-A-N. And I'm not going to say your whole fucking email address, but Nan2000 blah, blah, blah. At blah, 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 blah. Now, here's the thing. I understand that that is also a term for grandma. And I apologize. So when I saw Nan, I thought, Nancy, I'm sorry. And so for now on, I will try harder. Um, but I think you're fucking burying the lead here. You fucking gave me shit for not reading poetry. And then I do a whole fucking episode of where all I'm doing is reading poetry. And you fucking clap back at me for getting your fucking name wrong. I'm just fucking with you, Susan. Susan. Oh God, I almost fucking called you Nancy again. Maybe I'm just going to call you Nancy all the time. Um, I appreciate that you're listening and you're having fun. And I, and I know that um, giving this podcast five stars was on your fucking agenda because we talked about that last time. Um, but maybe I'll just call you Nancy for now on, Susan. God, this whole thing sounds ridiculous as I'm saying it. But anyway, is this thing even on? Tap, tap, tap. Okay. So that was weird. Um, I, I will try not to start future episodes with me completely fucking ruining shit but um hopefully susan like you've been around as long as you have you're a fucking good sport you gotta be to put up with fucking shit like this so um i apologize and i'm glad you're around so with that said actually i, I was gonna do a video about this but i thought you know what let's let's take a little dive into this so i got another email because of things that were said in the email, I won't say who it's from, and I'm not going to read the whole email. I'm just going to read this one part here. Okay, we'll just do this. Okay, so I got this lovely, lovely email from a lovely fucking person who hasn't responded to me, by the way. I'm going to throw that out right now. But a really long, lovely email. And one of the questions is in here and maybe I'll save one question for here and then one question for an actual video. I'll do that. And I responded and answered this question. So here is the email. Okay. My problem is I don't know how to analyze my own fucking work. Poetry, always prose, 
some half rhyme couplets occasionally. So if I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about in the poem, how will anyone else relate, read, enjoy, understand, or interpret them? Okay, that was basically the gist of that question. Okay, so my answer to this question is, again, and we've talked about this before, we've, we've heard this, that once the poem leaves you, it's, it should be dead to you. And it could be whatever for anybody. There's a lot of poetry out there that I think is absolute nonsense that doesn't fucking say or mean anything that a lot of people fucking fawn over like it's going out of style. And I don't get it, but it's not necessarily my place to get it because that poem was not meant for me. Now, the person who wrote the poem did not know that the poem was not meant for me. They just wrote the poem. That's their fucking job. They write the poem. The readers will put attachment to things in each poem. Some people will see a line they like. Some people, there'll be a rhyme in there that they like. Some people, the whole poem speaks to them like it's fucking them. And then that becomes their poem. And since this is something that I've talked about over and over again, I was trying to think of a better analogy that... um, might sink in with people more. What I said was, imagine you have a chair in your house and that chair sits in your living room or whatever. And for the most part, that chair never gets sat in. It's basically a fucking coat rack. It's a chair that you end up throwing blankets on or throwing coats on Or when you're doing laundry, you might put all your fucking laundry on when you're folding it. You know, it's just this fucking thing that takes up space and you put stuff on it. Okay. And then you finally decide, I'm going to fucking take this chair and send it to the fucking Goodwill or the fucking charity shop or the fucking thrift store. Or I'm going to have a fucking garage sale and get rid of this fucking chair. Facebook Marketplace, um, up something, whatever these fucking apps are. You put the chair on there. Somebody comes and buys that chair. It's like the perfect color, the perfect style. It's this chair that they've always wanted. Okay? You don't know this. You don't know that there's someone out there who's been like looking for this exact type of chair. They take this chair. Now that chair to that person could end up being a lot of things. But it's not up to you. It's not up to you to know what that chair is going to be used for. You just sold them the fucking chair. Now, this chair could end up being the most comfortable chair that this person has ever sat in. And you're like, oh, I sat in that chair and it's not that comfortable. Well, there's a lot of things like seats and stuff that I've sat in that I thought were garbage. And other people sit in and they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Okay. But that's, that's not for us. That chair could also be the chair that someone sits in when their future significant other walks over across the room and leans down and gives them that first kiss that will make their whole relationship stem from that moment. You don't know what that is because it's not your job. That chair could end up being the chair that the family pet crawls up in and sleeps in throughout the day and night. And then that chair becomes, well, that's Fido's favorite chair. Okay. And Fido will spend the next 12 years or 15 years curled up in a little ball in the middle of that chair. Or that could be the chair that grandma dies in. Okay. Now this just fucking got dark. Okay. It could be. That chair could be the chair that someone wedges under the doorknob or whatever to keep burglars out one night when someone's trying to invade their home. It could be the chair that when the house is on fire, you're running across the room to get out of and you trip on it and you fall and you break your fucking leg and you can't get out and you burn to death in the fucking house. This got fucking horrific. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is it's not your job to decide the fate and future of that chair. 
once that chair leaves your possession, it becomes someone else's chair. And the things that happen, the memories that happen, the attachments that happen to that chair belong to those people. And that's why it trips me out so much when people are like, oh, I don't want to put this poem out. It's not a very good poem. I don't want to, I don't want to read this poem. I, I, I just, nah, this, this poem's not good. This poem will never see the light of day. You never know what that poem is going to be. And some people give me shit when I say every poem out there is somebody's favorite poem. I fucking fully agree that. Because we do not know that that's not true. So as long as we know that that's not true, then there has to be truth in it. Because we cannot prove that something is not true. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not really our full job to analyze and overthink all of our work. If you read something you wrote and you're like, huh, that's good. That's it. That's all you need to do. If you read something you wrote and say, Jesus Christ, this is all messy. Shit's all fucked up all over the place. Then tinker with it if you want to tinker with it. But you wrote that. That thing you created now lives and breathes on that page. And it can have a life if you let it. But if you want to be a fucking prison guard or a prison warden and keep all of these creations you made locked up in a drawer or in a notebook that will never see the light of day, no one will ever know if they'll like that stuff. You will never know if anyone will like that stuff. We're leaving a lot of things up to chance when we put stuff out there. But if you never put the stuff out there, you're never going to know. And I think not knowing is worse than knowing. Do you see what I'm saying? Is this all making sense? Probably could have had a little more happy, um, happy thoughts in there besides that uh, fucking horrific thing. But you know how it is. So anyway, thank you for the email. And if you have a question about anything or anything like that, go ahead and send it to me at IHateMattWall at gmail.com. And um, I will answer your question. Oh, there was another thing. The person who sent this email said, I understand how to do it, but I know a lot of people don't. Is there a way you can tell somebody how to leave you a, re a review on iTunes? So I think how you do it, because when I look to do it, like if you're listening to this on iTunes, you just look at, like if you're on your phone, you look at the podcast, like where it has like the image of the logo and then the episodes. If you scroll down further, it'll show you the ratings. And if you click on that, you can leave a rating. If not, I think if you just go to iTunes.com, search the podcast, I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, and then just click leave a review. Um, I think it's that easy. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a link. I'll, I'll try to. We'll figure this out. I might put a link in the description below to see if you could do that. But thank you for pointing that out because I, I never I never really think about it. Because when something like if I figure out a way to do something, I go, oh, well, this must be really easy. And everyone must know how to do this if I was able to fucking figure it out. So my bad on that. Sometimes things just fall in my lap. So I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, some other people were asking if I record this show on a pirate ship because of the creaking. The answer is yes. I'm on a pirate ship sitting in a rocking chair. And, and that is just the, the sound of the ocean against the hull. Ooh, it's a frigid night out here. It is. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. No, this is just this fucking janky ass, old ass fucking desk. So, um, and actually, I don't know if you recall, but if you listen to like early episodes of this, it might just have like one little creak in it. And now it's like, and I'm like, one of these days, I'm going to fall through the desk and go face first right on my fucking dick. Let's get to the fucking motherfucking show notes. So 
let's give a shout out to those motherfuckers over on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. You guys are awesome. Let me know what else I could do for you guys. Um, and then for the YouTube crew members, we got AM, we got Patrick, we got Alan. I want to give a thank you to all three of you guys. You guys are killing it. And then for the big swinging dicks over at the Anarchy Crew, who were what? Swinging for the fences and knocking balls over the motherfucking walls. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Jessica, and to our newest anarchist, Shaylin. Thank you so much for joining the motherfucking Anarchy Crew. And I hope you're killing it. And I hope that you enjoy your stay here at Anarchy Falls. All right. So let's see. We went through how to lead this show a five-star review. We went through the shout-outs. We went through the retraction. We went through an email. So now let's look up my fucking bag of tricks. I have a bag of tricks here. I'm going to look it up. I also have a bag of Lucky Charms and Captain Crunch, but... Um, we're dealing with tricks now. A lot of this is poets' problems, okay? I don't know another way of fucking putting this out there. But a lot of poets out there have a problem calling themselves a poet. They feel stupid doing it because it sounds like a stupid fucking word. And the... Um, image that it puts in other people's minds when you say you are a poet. Like they think of, um, I think especially for male poets, it's hard because a lot of dudes have a hard time with their fucking masculinity and think that it's always in fucking question for some stupid fucking reason. So they have a hard time calling themselves a poet. This is, this is stupid. Like you should not feel this way. Um, and then there are other people who feel like if they say they're a poet, that it comes off as like pretentious, which I don't understand. Because if you were also a fry cook, like would that sound pretentious? If you were a CEO of a multi million dollar corporation, would that sound pretentious if that's the thing that you fucking do? You know? So this is like this whole fucking thing where. There's people freak out on this. And I was going to talk about this. And then I was listening to a podcast. They were talking to some chick. Or no, they weren't talking to her. They, they were talking about an essay she wrote or something. And the name of the essay is gone from my head now. Um, I barely remember the name of the fucking podcast. Don't remember the episode. Because, again, I just hear things and I run my mouth. So here's the thing. This chick said on this podcast, or they said she said, that she doesn't call herself a poet. She calls herself a writer. Because a writer is something you do. And a poet is something like you aspire to be or something. Or it's something that you do as an extension of some... I, I don't fucking know what the fuck she was talking about. Okay, here's the deal. That sounds like a bullshit answer. And I know why she said it. She said it because poets, like I just said, are fucking scared to call themselves poets. So this chick who's all high and mighty in whatever fucking world poetry bullshit goes on at, said, hey guys, guess what? It's okay, you don't have to call yourself poets. You could just call yourself a writer, and now you can feel good about yourself again and not feel like you have to hide in the fucking shadows. And they're like, oh yay, I don't have to hide anymore. This is great. This is so good she said that. Oh man, I feel so much better now about myself. My self-esteem is going to go through the... Okay, listen, if you're a fucking poet, if you are one who writes poetry, you are a fucking poet... And you're like, oh, well, you just said if one who writes. Okay, if you're a screenwriter, if you write scripts, you are also writing those things. But when you talk to screenwriters, they say they're screenwriters. I don't know. It's, it's just like, I, I just, I don't 
no like yes if you want to call yourself a writer because you're ashamed of calling yourself a poet go right ahead but if you're ashamed to call yourself a poet I don't want to fucking read your poetry because your poetry is probably filled with fucking shame and guilt and self-loathing and a bunch of shit that I don't want to fucking read about. Okay. So if you're a poet, fucking own it and fucking say what it is. God, if people are so fucking worried about their goddamn masculinity, maybe that's the thing we need to fucking look at. Maybe we need to go, why are you so fucking afraid of what people think about you? Why does the word poet feel demasculating to you? Or why does the word poet make you feel pretentious? Fucking make it what it is. You have the power. You are a creative person. You are a creator. Call yourself a fucking poet. And if you need to fucking reinvent the word so it fits you, fucking do that. If you're a poet, you're a fucking poet. That's it. I don't fucking know what else to say about that. I'm fucking getting all fucking mad and shit now. This is fucking stupid. I think the thing that hurts poetry more than anything in the public eye is how embarrassed poets are of being a poet and of the poetry that they write and the poetry that they read. Like, it's fucking stupid who fucking cares? Jesus. Change the fucking script, dude. You're in control of your own destiny. If you don't like what poetry looks like to the rest of the world, then be fucking brighter, be louder, be the thing that people see before they see all that shit. I don't know. So what do you think about poetry? Do you feel comfortable calling yourself a poet? Does, does it make you cringe? If so, why? Why does the word poet make you cringe? I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Send me an email and I'll read it on the show next time. And now um, I guess we'll, we'll go face first into the butt plugs. So before anything, you guys have to remember that this week is Thanksgiving week. And because it's Thanksgiving week, there is a Black Friday sale going on that will wrap around into a Cyber Monday sale. So if you want to get really great prices on my chat books, use the promo code BLKFRI20 to get 20% off of selected chat books, which are all my chat books with the exception of one, which is... Mart. Mart is going to be $5 for the rest of November. Okay? Only $5. That's a fucking steal. It's a fucking steal. And what is it? It's a bunch of poetry about fucking um, waiting in lines. Let me, let me read something to you out of it real quick since we're here talking. This is called The Dead Walk Slowly. At Walmart today, it was awful as usual. But something was different. There was an apathy among the shoppers. Everyone was slower than usual, barely lifting their feet as they walked. People shuffled along, bags under everyone's eyes. I saw a kid slamming his mom in the face with a foot-long salami. While she checked her shopping list, she didn't flinch. She let him do it. Where did he learn that, I wondered. There was a couple, a really fat woman and a really tall man. They were both in pajama pants and hoodies. Looked like death. He bent over in front of me to get something off the bottom shelf. His pants fell all the way down to his ankles. No underwear. His bare white ass was looking at me. It was thin and hairless. He didn't jump. He didn't try to pull his pants up. He just let them fall. He moved slowly. I turned down another aisle. Everyone looked sick. There was another portly woman. She had makeup on, but still looked tired. She had a huge tattoo across her chest. She looked like she was going to throw up. A woman that looked just like her, but 30 years older, looked at me. 
she started singing the Batman theme song from the 60s. She worked in some chuckles. Where the fuck am I, I thought. How can I get out of here? So, that was The Dead Walk Slowly. Out of my book, Mart. That's only $5 now through the end of the month. On my Etsy shop. Links down below. And also, don't forget, tonight, my newest chat book. It's out now. It's 20 poems, actually. I counted them. There's 20. 20 poems that I wrote in one night when I was hanging out with the Anarchy crew on a Zoom call. We were all doing it. It was fun. It was great. 20 poems. That's some good shit. Also, if you would like to be a member of the Anarchy crew and do stuff like I just said, click the join button on my YouTube page, okay? And then when it shows you the options, there's the crew, which is how you can see the video version of this podcast and get extra little videos and stuff that the, the norms don't get. Then there's the Anarchy crew, where there's almost 100 videos of lessons, writing prompts, daily writing prompts. You get discounts on my merchandise anyway. You get your own special little promo code. Um, All sorts of shit. Then there's a new tier. The new tier on my YouTube is Chatbook of the Month Club. So what you get with the Chatbook of the Month Club, you get whatever new chatbook I have, like this month, it's tonight. Last month, it was Preview of a Dangerous Mind and Last Chance. So it's whatever I put out that month, okay? Plus whatever zines I put out, the postcards with the poem in the picture, um, bookmarks, whatever I make that month, I'm going to send to you guys, okay? Plus, plus you get all of the Poetic Anarchy stuff. You become a member of the Anarchy crew. You're just in the chat book of the month club now as well. You see what I'm saying? So go over and do that. If, if you don't want the videos and you're not into all that shit and you just like listening and you want to support my, my writing, go over to Patreon and join the chat book plus tier to be able to get a chat book of the month kind of deal. Same kind of thing, but without the Anarchy Crew stuff. If you need some mentorship, if you need someone to go over your work with you, if you want to work on a marketing plan, if you have a big book launch coming up, if you have any of the stuff that you want to talk about, just go to IHateMountWall.com slash mentorship. You can see all the stuff in there that I could do for you. Um, and even if you, what you are thinking about isn't necessarily on there, just send me an email to IHateMountWall at gmail.com. Tell me what you need, and I'll tell you what I can do. If I can't help you, I will send you into a direction of someone who can. But if I can help you, I'll fucking help you. (sighs) Awesome. So, um, Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, I'm hoping it will be finished today. That is the plan, that it will be done and sent out today. So, fingers crossed on that. Because Poetic Anarchy Volume 4 is right around the corner. So, that'll be a lot of fun. Blood rag number five out now because I got my paper. I didn't fucking tell you about the paper. I'll have a video if anyone gives a shit about the paper shortage fiasco. Paper is here. So I'm printing out a ton of shit today. If you haven't joined my mailing list yet, go to IHateMountWall.com. There's a little box at the top, like kind of at the top, kind of in the middle. It'll say, um, click here to get a free ebook. That ebook, the um, 2021 yearbook of stories and poems. That is going to be gone after December 31st. So if you want that book, it's over 100 pages. It might be over 200 pages. I can't remember exactly. But um, it is there now, and it will only be there for the rest of the year. There it is. Jesus Christ, these cars are fucking loud as shit. All right. So I'm sure there's stuff I'm forgetting, but I'm fucking too tired and I don't give a shit right now. So with that said, you guys are awesome. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.